Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. We continue to feature young people who are passionate and continue to contribute on a national and international level. This week, we chat with Girls of a Feather. And for Link Up, we learn about St. Lucia young leaders in Canada. Chelsea Foster is the founding director of Girls of a Feather, a mentorship and advocacy group for adolescent girls in St. Lucia. They have done so many amazing things like hold confidence building camps for girls and launch several chapters in several secondary schools around the island. COVID-19 did not stop them as they were able to launch their storyteller series online, still moving forward with their mandate. A little later in the second segment, we chat with two members. Let's take a look. Hello, Chelsea. How are you doing? Hi, Ayla. I'm fine. Thanks for having me. You call me Ayla. People don't know that name, you know. Oh <laughs> okay, well, let's cut that part uh, out. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, so, you know, we're really excited to hear um, the stuff that Girls of a Feather is up to. Um, tell us what it is that, first of all, let's talk about the genesis, or, uh, the genesis of Girls of a Feather. I know that you guys have been, what, five years strong? Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Non-profit organization. So just, let's talk about how your organization started. Okay. So last year we celebrated five years, our five-year anniversary. Um, and it started out just as a youth organization where we recognized that there were a lack of opportunities to work exclusively with young girls in a volunteer space Um, and that's how the idea was birthed. Um, I started off with a few friends, I got my family involved, I dragged them in (laughs) and we launched our first Beauty with Brains camp. So it was a self-development camp that we held for about three to five days. We've done it for two years so far. And we've invited mentors um, to speak with the girls um, on different issues, whether it was health, entrepreneurship. We had a theme every year. And from then, we expanded into schools because the girls were like, we want to continue this. So we mentioned earlier, you know, we had the girls of a feather SJC club. Um, We started off um, at Cashree's Comprehensive. And we took um, a break um, last year so we can focus on developing an actual curriculum on youth and gender development um, where we can actually train the students who um, get involved with the organization and they can actually get you know a certificate of completion and they can do more gender girl-centered work in their schools. Um, I know Compre has some boys involved, yeah. so I think they're graduating <laughs> this year, so they'll be getting a little something. Well, I think that's fine, though. Yeah, It'll be of nice course, to have you, the boys supporting the girls. It is, and I, I remember I mentioned to someone, you know, maybe we should change the name of the organization. They're like, no, keep it as that and just yeah. let the boys know, you know, it's open yeah. to getting involved. You yeah. shouldn't have to, you know. So we're excited about that. So it's not only um, for all girls schools. We're definitely hoping to expand. You know, last year we got the blessing from the education officer that she wants to see more organizations or more clubs like this in different schools. And she could think of some schools who could use it. So we definitely, I know we'll go into it later, but um, school-based interventions and um, community-based interventions as well are, are what we're focusing on nice yeah um coming to that i wanted to ask what are some of the problems you guys seek to solve because you mentioned that you wanted to work exclusively with young girls mm-hmm. and um what are some of the problems that you guys seek to to solve and what are some of the things that in your work you've realized are problems that keep popping up mm-hmm um, I mean, one of the main areas for sure is gender-based violence, that mm-hmm. whenever we ask the girls in the program, what is an issue you want to focus on, it is always that. And you can see statistics and the data shows that there is a prevalence in St. Lucia. You know, within the past five years, the reports have shown there were between 75 to 90 cases reported annually, and that's only reported, yeah. you know, because there are a lot of people who are not comfortable you know, speaking about these things. So that a lot of issues surrounding sexual health education. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't mention it earlier, but the, the organization is really a, a mentorship and advocacy group. And I think what the, the gap that we want to fill is the involvement of young girls in leadership and decision making yeah. where they can do what 
um, young act or older activists are doing and speaking out on issues that they're most passionate about um, that are affecting young girls' socioeconomic issues. Um, so I think bringing older persons into that space where we can groom them and teach them the skills where they can go into their communities and solve their own problems in their communities. So last year we held a, a leadership workshop where we invited um, young girls in the general public to design programs that focus on different things. Yeah. So we had one group who focused on mental health, mm -hmm. another group who wanted to focus on um, developing a database where they can collect issues and cases of sexual harassment in schools yeah. which is something you know we don't really take seriously we just kind of brush it off in schools as boys playing yeah. and you know just normalize these these sorts yeah. of things in public spaces in bathrooms how young girls are treated and i think um you you form a very important um you you bring so much value in the in the little gaps that we have mm -hmm. in our educational system because i know that we're working on um sex education and letting girls know and, and giving them the information that they need to be empowered to make right decisions. And I think sometimes, most times, our education system, we don't get that, you know. I, I, could, I could remember my first um, encounter with, it was HFLE, and everything was just so basic and so clean. But, you know, what are the little things happening in primary school? Um, and I'm sure girls of a feather can let girls know that things like bad touch and good touch and letting girls know that you have the right to, to speak up and speak out at every, you know. So I think girls of a feather, kudos to you guys and the stuff that you've been doing already. How, um, what have you done to fill some of these gaps already? Um, I mean, for us, for sure, it's awareness raising yeah. because, I mean, I don't want to oversell our organization as we provide counseling. Yeah, yes, yes, so yes. I think it's a lot of awareness raising and raising the consciousness of young people, mm -hmm. um, creating that space where they even know who they can go to to get those referrals. So, you know, our first camp, you and you were part of that. Yes. We invited someone with the experience who supports survivors yeah. of abuse. So just simple things where people don't know where to go yeah, to, yeah, which yeah. is a huge, you know, a lot of the times you say the, 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 the services are there, but people yeah. don't. But people don't aren't yeah. aware of it. They don't know who to go to. Yeah, so if you create that space where you know girls of a feather knows this person, they can contact this person directly without us even knowing. Mm -hmm. Creating that relationship yeah. um, with with um, service providers is what we're really trying to do. Because I, I mean, we can't as much as I want to do everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's where we are with it. So just a lot of awareness raising. Nice. Yeah. And I know that you guys from one thing from looking from the from the outside looking in and you know seeing your growth and development, you know, I've always been your biggest fan. Um so because I find it so closely aligned to what we want to do with Drama Can, but you know, we have um our focus in other places. But just being a young person, let's talk about that. As a young person studying and the hustle and you know, because we're talking about stepping up and you know, that's taking ownership of of, of, of solving problems. Give us a little bit of insight into your journey as the founder of a nonprofit organization who actually is going full time very soon. Yeah. And you know, actually asking people to come on board and you're actually going to be hiring people. And for me, that is amazing to be able to say, you know, one day everybody say, you know, one day I want to be able to employ people and be responsible for persons' livelihoods. And that's a dream that anybody, and I personally, anybody wants to realize. So speak about that. Okay. <laughs> it was definitely um, scary, um, but I like I was saying that when you're called to do something and you're yeah. passionate about it, I remember one of the girls who started with me was always saying, Chelsea, I know this is your baby. This is your whatever. I don't want to mess it up because this is your vision. Mm -hmm. um, you, it, it takes a lot of sacrifice because mm -hmm. I'm now still, well, doing my second degree and I'm still a university student. But I think the most important thing when you're getting into this work is just being consistent. Yeah. Uh, maintaining the momentum and uh, just knowing that this is your vision and this is what you want to do because I didn't always get the support people yeah, didn't understand yeah. why I was giving so much of myself to something that is not giving me anything yeah, back yeah. well how they say mm -hmm. I guess maybe I wasn't making money yeah. um, 
I should be focusing on my career. Why am I giving so much of myself to this? So it was hard for people to kind of understand why I just committed so much of my time. But the passion drives you. The passion was there. Mm. So I was fortunate enough because I maintained, I, I was so consistent with our activities, with meeting with the girls, expanding the school clubs. We got the support to get um, a grant, a two-year grant, mm -hmm. um, where we can now go full-time transition into that and get more activities going. Well, congratulations, yes. boss lady. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 congratulations. I'm, I'm very fortunate and I'm very lucky and I'm very happy and I know this will go a long way. And uh, it's not something I want to just benefit um, our organization solely mm -hmm. this grant and the, the transition into a full-time service I really like I said earlier want to see more youth organizations get into the space of gender advocacy and girls rights advocacy mm -hmm. so if we have a headquarters where we can get more youth to do what your organization is doing drama can do production um, do capacity building training mm -hmm. sessions which I really think we need um, and just create an environment where young girls feel a safe. A community, yeah. create a community. And if Girls of a Feather can be the start for that, um, I'm very happy that, you know, we can, can do that and give back in some way. Well, congratulations, Chelsea. Um, I'm very inspired by your story. And um, just seeing the, the genesis from the beginning and now, and I, it just, it says that, as you say, don't give up, keep the passion and you know and just keep working towards it and what you're doing is very important and we need more people like you um two questions before i wrap up how has COVID 19 changed your your programming in any way has it put a spoke in any of your plans let's speak about that um our immediate response um before we even decided to change anything was to just check in with our girls the yeah. girls who are part of our club so we hosted a series of virtual sessions, most of it focused on self-care. Mm -hmm. um, we did a series of mm -hmm. virtual sessions um, where we checked in with them to make sure that they were coping with school well, mm -hmm. that you know there's that platform where if you need to speak to anyone, we had some psychologists there to speak with them. Um, but like you mentioned earlier, we're transitioning. So we spent a lot of time doing our five-year strategic plan um, and taking into consideration everything that is happening now with um, children being back at school yeah. because, you know, we were supposed to start new clubs. Um, even our training session that, you know, we would have had the curriculum develops, um, developers come down. We have to postpone that to next year. Um, so it was sort of like a reflection period and also giving us space yeah. to take time for ourselves, which is important. Yeah. Um, but really giving us that time to yeah. see how best we can respond to yeah. what is happening during this pandemic. So it's just a little bit about reimagining, but still keeping true to your money. So we have three girls here waiting for us, and they're going to talk to us about something. So let's give us a little insight as to the excitement that they have that they're going to... <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So we have the Storyteller Bootcamp coming up. Mm -hmm. um, it's a series of virtual and in-person workshops mm -hmm. to really... I guess marry creative um, advocacy in a sense when it comes to um, telling the stories of girls and you know the issues that affect them directly or indirectly yeah. or people around them. So we contacted some really really amazing facilitators, two of them is from Trinidad and Barbados and we have five of them um, locally so the girls will be doing a series of um, film filmmaking sessions, learning how to do graphic design, photography, they just wrapped up this week, um, creative writing and journalism. So we meet every day, um, Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. and the girls break out into their workshops. Nice. Um, and it's broken up into capacity building, designing projects and then implementing them so that on the International Day of the Girl, which is in October, October 11th, 2020, mm -hmm we can actually do a showcase of right. all the projects that have come out of, you know, those working sessions. So as we wrap up, Chelsea, once again, thank you so much. Um, let us know what's next for you. What's the one thing that you want the public to know about Girls of a Feather? And let us know how we can contact you. Okay, so we 
like I said, we are transitioning full time. So you'll be hearing more about us. You'll be hearing more from the team. Um, and uh, we, we should be launching um, our programs again by October mm -hmm. where we can more volunteers. I know a lot of people want to volunteer. We need mentors, we need volunteers, and of course, the girls who want to benefit from our programs will be inviting you all um, in October to apply and get back to, to business. So you can contact us on Facebook, Girls of a Feather SLU, on Instagram, Girls of a Feather SLU, um, and Gmail at Girls of a Feather SLU at gmail.com. Thank you very much, Chelsea. Go follow the page, lend your support, and join the movement. We'll be right back. <laughs> Wash them right with soap and lots of water. Get between fingers, get under the nails, go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. There is always a place for organizations like Girls of a Feather who continue to advocate for and support young people, especially girls. Thank you, Chelsea, and thank you so much for stepping up. For the next segment, I chat with two executive members of the group, and they tell me about their experience of being a part of Girls of a Feather. Let's look at the interview with Franya Chandler and Shanita Favri. Hey guys, welcome back to our feature on Girls of a Feather. And I am here with two very excited members. And I think I want to make them introduce themselves individually. And while you're introducing yourself, let us know how long you've been a member for. So we'll start with you. Okay, hi, my name is Franya Chandler. I'm 18 years old and I'm the president of the Girls of a Feather National Club. I have been with the club for roughly four years, I would say. My name is Shonita Favre, I am 16 years and I am the PRO and I have been with the club from, from last year but part of the Compre Club from 2017. Nice, so as you did, let us know what you like about being a member of Girls of a Feather. Being Girls of a Feather is a pleasure to me because we advocate for girls' rights and we stand up for girls and make their living better. Nice. Rania? Well, Girls of a Feather has taught me a lot. It has really boosted my self-confidence in myself and generally about feminism, I have learned a lot and about a lot of things and discussions that I did not really know much about, I've learned a lot concerning feminism. Nice. I know that you guys have a lot of exciting things that you engage in all the time and Chelsea, you all do a lot of work. So let us know about this latest project that you guys are working on and it's ongoing. So I don't know who wants to take the mic and answer. <laughs> okay, we are currently hosting a free week storyteller book camp. Mm -hmm. We have different facilitators, um, miss, um, basically on activism, creative writing, journalism, and filmmaking. And at the end of the free weeks, everybody will get to showcase their work for International Day of a Girl. Mm -hmm. Franya, so. Um, why journalism and creative writing? What have you learned about it so far? What have you taken away from the sessions that you guys have engaged in already? Well, currently I'm in filmmaking. Okay. And I really have learned a lot because prior to the boot camp, I had no knowledge. I didn't know anything about filmmaking. I've learned a lot of little things that probably anybody would just let slide and not know how much a filmmaker actually puts into their work and i have really learned a lot about the little things that matter to make a film what it is mm -hmm. so it has been extremely informative and extremely exciting as well because we also do little activities that engage us and help us to actually put into work what we learn from it. nice so was filmmaking something that you were interested in before Yes. And you just happened to get the opportunity to learn more about it because of Girls of a Feather? Yes, it was. It's something that I've always been interested in and wanted to get into. But I've never really found something that, well, a program that I could get myself into. And being a part of Girls of a Feather and us hosting a boot camp like that, it was a great opportunity for me to get into it and to learn about something that I have never learned about before. Nice. Shonita, so let us know about you know, what was one of the more memorable sessions that you've been a part of in the, is it the Storyteller Bootcamp series? Nice, I got it. 
Okay, um, well, the Storyteller Bootcamp is exciting because, you know, I meet new people like all the time. My teacher is amazing. Um, not really, that's not what Miss Kami Joseph. Nice. Um, so not really what I chose, but then knowing that I have it now is really good and make me better my speaking skills, being the PRO of Notes for Feather, and I can write better. Um, but one of my most exciting experiences with Notes for Feather is the workshop. The mentorship program um that was last year it was very exciting that's why i met franya and i that's when i joined the national club nice franya you mentioned that you're part of um you're the president of the national club yeah. let us know what is it that you do on the national club and as you're in your team what have you guys done personally what are some of the things as president and in your tenure that you say you could you're proud of doing well i've been part of the national club for a little over two and a half years. I originally got introduced to Girls of a Feather through Conda Convent branch. Mm -hmm. So before my work was mainly based on what we were doing at school, when I started to get involved in the National Club, I realized that there was a lot to learn and a lot that we were not doing that will really open my mind to a lot of topics. One of the things that I'm really proud of that we did as a club would probably be last year, like she mentioned, the leadership workshop. It's something that, well, I was on the executive last year as well, and it's something that we got to be a part of in the planning and the making. And it was very, it was a very interesting experience. Mm -hmm. It was also, we were also part of the workshop as well. So while we were working behind the scenes, we were also part of it and learning from the different facilities that the workshop had speaking to us. So I think that would have, that I probably would have been the most proud of, especially with the workshop, the different groups, they had projects that they put out. Mm -hmm. And it was very, it was, it was really nice to see everybody come up with different topics yeah. and to come up with solutions on daily problems that females face. The group that won theirs, they ended up making a online forum and for people to speak about, well, I think it was different issues and yeah, it was sexual yeah. harassment. Uh, sexual so, harassment. Yeah, for teenagers, okay. and that's something that I find is that you don't get every day. It's mm. it was very interesting to see young people come up and take that initiative on their own and to come up with an actual plan and to mm. actually implement it at the end of the workshop. Yeah. So yeah, that was that's something I'm very proud of. Shonita, you mentioned that you're the PRO of the Castries Comprehensive Chapter. No, What's that? Oh, it's on the National Club. Okay, so is it that you all have a National Club and then you have the school chapters? Yes, we have the National Club and the different branches at secondary schools. Okay, so let me know what about you in terms of all the things that you've been exposed to. What are you most proud of? Okay, well, I'm most proud of, first of all, the leadership workshop mm -hmm. and also our some different virtual programs during the quarantine. We had the self-care, we had the mental health, we had, um, we did have a next skincare, mm -hmm. skincare and health, mm -hmm. and um, the childhood trauma. This was very successful virtual sessions mm -hmm. and our club came, so some was for club members only, and then mm -hmm. for the last one, for the mental health, we opened it up to the public, so, Everybody could have come, everybody asked questions, very informative, everybody was participating and we got good remarks at the end, so that was very proud. Nice. I was so very proud of it. As we wrap up, two questions. How does it feel being in a leadership position with Girls of a Feather? And what will you tell your, peer, your peers, your friends? Why? What is it that you'll tell them to come on board and to join the movement? We'll start with you, Franya. So as a leader, and I know Franya as a leader, so I don't know why she's like, <laughs> I don't know what's that. So, <laughs> so continue. So let's answer the question. So how does it feel to be in a leadership position in such a, in my opinion, I find Girls of a Feather is extremely trendy. It's with the movement and with the times. And it's amazing how much support that they've been able to galvanize. So let me know how you feel about being a part of the leadership and what is it that you're going to tell your friends to do to join? and why they should join? Well, being a part of the executive really does give you a purpose. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like you're doing something about problems that you experience on your own. So for me, seeing that some of the things that Girls of Feather address are things that I have dealt with before internally, 
or that I have been struggling with and seeing that we can actually go out and help other girls mm -hmm. speak about these problems, break stigmas. It's really, it's a great feeling, honestly. Mm -hmm. So to see that you are making a change, it's really good. And to tell what I would tell my friends is don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell them if you want to join something like that and you want to, to learn about anything, go for it, whether it be Girls Over Feather or another feminist group or any group, any young leadership group that is coming up in St. Lucia or out of St. Lucia, I would say to take the chance and be a part of it because you would learn a whole lot more. You would meet people. It's a great experience overall. That's the Franya I know. <laughs> and we'll wrap up with you, Shonita. It has been very eye-opening for me seeing the struggles girls face on a day-to-day -day basis and it's my pleasure to help fix them, to make them feel better, have like being the person they can talk to about it. And for my friends, I say like if they have any problems or anything, I can help them. If they want professional help, I can ask, I can seek for them. Um, if they want to come join the group, it's open and just fill out the application and very supportive people, very supportive girls, because that can help talk to them, make friends if they don't have, if they feel lonely inside. We have people to talk to, so. Thank you so much, guys. You guys, I think Chelsea chose the right ambassadors to come and talk about Girls Over Feathers. So again, I want to say thank you. Congratulations on all the work that you guys have been doing. Fortune and favors in all the work. Congratulations. Continue stepping up. And thank you very much. We'll be right back. <laughs> Back to school is finally here. Jay, you have your hand sanitizer, you have your disinfecting wipes, I even gave you an extra mask, and this one you can put it on. Jaden, what are the COVID-19 rules? Wash your hands, wear all of your masks, and six feet away. Ensure your children are provided with a personal hygiene kit to carry and use on a daily basis. Items like hand sanitizer, wipes, and extra masks should be in there. Remember, if your child does not feel well or is showing any flu-like symptoms, keep him or her at home. Ensure your child wears a mask at all times, especially upon the arrival at school. Classrooms have been prepared to ensure physical distancing. Teachers and support staff will guide students during the day to wash their hands. And all surfaces, desks, chairs, door handles and washrooms will be cleaned regularly. By now, administrations of schools would have communicated the new schedule specific to your child's grade or form. Lunches will be consumed at the student's desk or outdoors while respecting physical distancing. As we start the new school year 2020-2021, we are all adjusting to the new normal that was introduced by COVID-19. I beg of all of you, let us observe the guidelines as prescribed by the Ministry of Health. Our children, teachers, educators, stakeholders, we all depend on one another to do the right thing for the sake of our children and the sake of our nation. Let us all be vigilant and observe the protocols as defined by the Ministry of Health. Juan Chances is the directing co-founder and events manager of St. Lucia Young Leaders in Canada. And their aim is to be the key contributor in various fields of mentorship, education, youth development, community improvement, and cultural exchange. Their mission is to encourage and facilitate youth projects and outreach initiatives while bridging the generational gaps within our culture and diaspora. Here for our link up segment, I chat with Juan Sanchez. Sanchez, what do you what do you do in Canada? I'm a full time master's student at the University of Guelph. Um, I also work full time at New Life Mills as a nutritional formulator, and I am the event manager of the Sanusian Young Leaders in Canada. Mm -hmm. The St. Lucian Young Leaders in Canada, bridging the generational gap through youth empowerment. Can you tell us a little bit more about that one? Um, if a St. Lucian Young Leaders in Canada, also known as SILK, um, our main aim is to be a key contributor in various fields um, in terms of mentorship, 
education, youth development, and com community improvement, cultural um, exchange, and pretty much just bridging that generational gap between the youth and, um, I guess, the older generation, um, and creating a youth-led um, organization or youth-led initiative in the diaspora, um, especially in Canada. What was the basis? Were you there or is it an organization that you're, you're joining or were you part of the development of the organization you told me about two or three years ago? Yeah, I was one of the founders. Um, um, we're pretty, still pretty young. We're only a little less than two years old. So pretty much everybody on our executive board are founders. Um, and we all have our different reasons for joining or for yeah. creating this organization. Um, one of the main reasons why all of us joined this organization is just there was a lack of youth representation in the diaspora. Um, so we all came together and um, we had a meeting of the minds and we all um, brainstormed what we wanted and so it's a grouping for young professionals, young St. Lucians who are in Canada pursuing, I guess, their careers or studies. Um, let us know how can people join or access some of the things that you guys um, provide in terms of services or support. Um, so right now you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, um, at SilkTO. Um, you can also email us at info at silk.ca. Um, we're still in the early stages of our um, frameworks of like we're still working on our website. We're still working on um, do, like donations and all that. But um, from, if, if anybody wants to join the organization, just send us a, a DM on Twitter or Instagram or even email us, um, and then we'll add, add you to the member list for now. And then as we grow, um, you. Once our website is launched, um, that'll be easier way for people to join. So my last question for you, um, Silk as a non-profit organization, being overseas, um, COVID-19, have you guys assisted anyone in because of the pandemic or has the pandemic changed your programming in any way? I'd say it has tremendously where um, we all have big plans for this summer. Um, all the different initiatives and that has put a lot of us on pause. Um, pretty much a lot of us are stuck in solution right now. Um, well, they are. And that has created almost a standstill, but not, um, it hasn't pushed us away from planning. And your mandate. Yeah. Um, but we have reach out to different organizations um, to help within COVID. Um, we have been spreading awareness with um, from the government of St. Lucia and Canada. Um, we did um, plan to help send some barrels to the different homes in St. Lucia as well. Um, and that's pretty much it for now, but there, um. As time passes, there is more things to come up. And yeah. Nice. Thank you very much. So, Juan, thank you so much for saying yes and agreeing to have this interview with us um, via Zoom. Um, tell all your executive members um, hello, and I hope everyone is doing well. And I just wish you guys all the best. And you know, let's keep let's keep in touch and let's um, pay attention to what's going on and how we can continue to assist each other. So, thank you very much. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. That's it for this week's installment of Stepping Up. Don't forget, we are open and ready to learn and feature anyone doing anything positive and impactful in the community. Just send me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to keep stepping up. <laughs>